and everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Now I've just picked myself up a new number five and a half jack plane. It's a Quang Sheng one. So what I thought I'd do in this video is show you guys exactly what I do. To take a brand new hand plane from the box to silky smooth shavings. So let's do that. Okay, so before we start fettling this new hand plane, I just want to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Tradeify. Now, Tradeify is a complete job management platform aimed at tradespeople. So it's used by over 20,000 tradespeople worldwide, and I'm 15 years working as a self-employed electrician, and I use it, so I have no problem recommending it to you guys. Now, what is it? Well, Tradeify is a complete job management platform, like I said, aimed at tradespeople. So if you're an electrician, plumber, carpenter, painter, decorator, roofer, tiler, floorer, whatever, if you're in the trades and you're self-employed, if it's just you or you have a small crew, then this is all your administration in one place. It's desktop based, it's also mobile based, so it's on Android and iOS, so it's an app that you can carry your office in your pocket, and it really helps with all your administration work. So if you're on the tools all day, Keeping on top of the office work can be quite difficult. And believe me, I know exactly what that's like. So with Tradeify, you can generate quick, fast, professional looking invoices, quotations, you can schedule jobs, you can have your crew uh, input all their timesheets through it as well. So it keeps everything there, nice and quick and easy to see, and you can track everything. You can track all your data, so you can see exactly how long jobs are taking you, exactly what they're costing you. You can track your invoices, see which ones are outstanding. You can track your quotations, see which ones succeeded and which ones didn't. You can have a complete client uh, database there so it makes it super easy to fire off invoices to your regular clients. It's really really handy for all your administration work and I highly recommend it. Now there's a 14 day free trial I will link it below no strings attached you can just go up sign up and play around with it for 14 days see if you can integrate it into your business uh, believe me it will help you out a lot and there's also a promo code man in shed that will give you 50% off for the first three months so if you're in the trades guys definitely recommend you check it out it has made my life a lot easier believe me and I'm sure it can help you guys out as well so there you go check it out trade it okay let's get on then and sort out this plane now it doesn't matter which plane you buy if it's new and out of the box it's going to require some setup now some brands more than others some require a little bit of work some require a lot of work now these particular ones from Quang Sheng which I got from Workshop Heaven uh, these are made to British standards, so they require a little bit of setup, but not much. And so far, I've uh, had little or no issues with them. So let's get this out of the wrapper. I'll get you in for a closer look at it then. Now, they do come coated with a little bit of oil that we need to clean off. So that is our very first job. So let me get you in for a close up and we get cracking on this plane. Okay, so here it is, a number five and a half. Like I said, it's a Quang Sheng. Now, all these come coated in oil just as a rust prevention so that's the first thing we want to address so let's just get the lever cap off loosen that a small bit because they're very tight uh, for shipping so we get that off take our blade and our chip breaker out and you can see all the oil that's on that so we want to separate the two of these and address that so we'll just leave them sit there like that now the frog is also coated in oil, so we want to get this out. Now, these are a bedrock patterned plane, so modeled after the Stanley bedrock, and they have two pins in the frog rather than two screws here, and those pins are held by two screws right in the back here. So we want to just loosen those screws off the pins. There we go. Just like that. Now everything is kind of coated with oil, like I said, so let's get this cleaned up. Okay, let's go get everything a quick wipe down. Now I like to use some of this electric contact cleaner because it evaporates off everything you spray it on and it's great for removing oil and gunk and that kind of stuff. And like I said, it leaves no film. It completely evaporates and dries in seconds. We just want to get that oil off because if sawdust starts mixing and sticking to that oil, we can get all sorts of problems in the plane, which we don't want. So let's get all this off. Some alcohol or some spirits would also be good for this. Or just give it a wipe off with a cloth if you've got nothing else. You don't want to just get that heavy oil off. And once all the components are then cleaned, we just want to do the plane itself. There we go, all parts now free of oil. Now let's look at what we need to do to the plane. 
Okay, so now that we have the plane disassembled and all the oil removed, everything is nice and clean. We just have a few things that we want to check. So first off, just check your handles, your totes, your rear tote and front tote. Just make sure the screws are nice and tight because wood does shrink and these do loosen up. But they are good and solid, happy days. Now I just want to check the frog. So I'll check the base of the frog. And these ones are really nicely machined, both the base of the frog and the bed of the plane. I'm just going to sit the frog back down on that. I'm just going to keep a little bit of pressure with my hand. I'm just going to make sure that there's no high or low spots, that that frog is not rock rocking anyway. And that is sitting nice and flat and true to that base, which is exactly what I want. And there's no rock in that whatsoever. If you do have a high spot, you're going to have to try and find that and address it because that will stop the frog from sitting square, which will stop the blade from sitting square. And also if it's not sitting perfectly flat and locked in place, you will get chatter as you're trying to plane. That blade will vibrate, it'll give you tear out and all sorts of in your wood and that's a headache that you do not need so we have nothing to address there that's happy days so far so next thing we want to check is the sides of our plane now some people like to hit this with a foil and just roll these over round them off because planes with a sharp edge they can track in the wood especially if you're going at an angle if you're referencing the entire width of the board and you're kind of planing up at an angle this uh, edge if it's sharp can bite in and cause your plane to fly off in that direction so a little rub of a foil, so we want to get a really fine foil. I'm just going to give that a slight little rub just to round over that corner slightly. Again, it's only a small bit I'm doing here now. A few strokes on that, angle in the way, and then just bring my foil back out like this just to round over that edge. And again, these edges are pretty well dressed as they come, so there's not much work to do there, but just a little bit of adjustment and we should be good to go. Again, if you have a really sharp edge, you might want to put a little bit of work into it. But I'm just going to roll off this edge slightly. Again, flatten out the foil, and then angle it more towards the side. So you're not putting like a 45 degree chamfer in it, you're putting a rounded edge in it. Now yeah, that's pretty nice. And let's just give it a little rub then with a bit of 600 grit. Just like that. And now they are nice to touch. They're really rounded over. They're not bad to begin with. I have to say these planes come pretty well set up out of the box, but that's just a nice little touch you can do to um, help your plane perform that little bit better. And uh, it does actually help as well. I have a, I got a ding in one of the corners of my plane when I didn't do this. It can cause the end to bulge out or the side to bulge out. You have a marker and you have to file down and try and reflatten that. So it can be a bit of a pain and that can help if you have slightly rounded over corner. It can help with any dings that you get. They won't bulge out in the bottom of the plane either. So there you go, that's the sides dressed, the frog, the frog checked and the handles checked. Next thing we wanna do is check the mount of the plane. So we'll do that now. Okay, so the next thing I wanna check is the mount out of the plane. So what I'm looking for here is any burr. Now the back edge feels pretty good and if you try and drag your nail up it, see if you can feel anything, there's nothing there. The top edge, which is the most important one, I have a little bit of a burr, just the barest bit. You can probably hear my fingernail just catching that. And that's just left over from the machining and the cutting of the mount itself. So that will wear down in time. Um, if you don't address it, it's not the end of the world, but we might as well address it now while we can. And I'm just gonna just barely rub the corner of that with some 600 grit, very, very light. I do not want to remove too much material or change the shape of that mouth in any way, shape or form. So just a little bit of a rub and now that's gone. So there's that bar cleaned off. So that's all it takes. Sometimes it can be more, sometimes it can be less. Sometimes you have to get the foil in there and really sort out that mount. But like I say, both sides of this are really nicely machined and finished, so we don't have too much work to do there. A less expensive plane, you could have a nice bit of work to do in the mount, but if you're doing that, just be very careful that you don't uh, take it off square or you don't remove too much material because it's the leading edge of this mount that we need to be perfectly flat. Okay, so I'm gonna get the frog back in this now and then we'll address the rest of this plane. Okay, so to put the frog back in is very, very simple. Now, like I said, these are the model after the bedrock, Stanley bedrock planes, so they're slightly different to the Stanley Bailey planes. The Stanley Bailey planes have two screws that go down through the frog and you have an adjustment screw in the back, whereas this has two screws that hold the pins down and that's your adjustment screw right there. So it's just a case of drop your frog back in. This guy here catches 
just behind the head of this screw there's kind of a washer built into this screw so just in between the two of those nice and simple drop him in couldn't be easier and then on our pins you have a hole drilled in them here that faces back towards the screw and that's how the screw catches it and right on the top of the pin too you have a little indentation here which tells you where that hole is so it's very easy to line these guys back up so just like that and once they are loose then you can move the frog forwards and backwards so let's tighten them back in get everything nice and squared up so once our two screws here and here are locked down that really locks down that frog so just make sure that you have your frog nice and square and then locked down so once that's done we can get on with the rest of the jobs Okay, very quickly, we'll just look at the lateral adjuster, which is this guy here. So you can see this is actually a three-part adjuster that you get with these crank sham planes. They're really nicely made. So you have a bearing on here, which sits into the chip breaker. And uh, that allows you to angle your blade left and right and keep it square. So you can see it has a bronze part here that's screwed on. And we have a bearing here. Now these can be quite stiff. This one's actually not too bad, but if they are very, very stiff, you can just bend it forward slightly and then just push it back into place and that'll free it up for you. And about there is where you want it. You don't want it super loose, but you don't want it so tight that it makes it hard to adjust the plane. So there we go, that's that addressed. Now, we need to look at the lever cap, the chip breaker, and we have to address the blade as well. So let's do that. Okay, so like I said, the next thing we want to address now is the lever cap, the chip breaker, or the cap iron, and the blade. Now the blade does come sharp, but it's not sharp enough to woodwork with, so you can still cut yourself with it, so just be careful. We'll address that now in a second. My first thing I want to look at is the lever cap. So I want to make sure that all my surfaces between my lever cap and my chip breaker and my chip breaker and my blade are perfectly meeting all the way across. So I have con constant pressure or continuous pressure the whole way across this lever cap. That's then applied to my blade all the way across my blade, nice and flat and good to have two nice mating surfaces so that again they don't get any chatter up through my blade so let's address that now i have a 400 grit diamond stone which i'm just going to run this on this is the uh, lever cap like i said and you can just get some marker let's get some permanent marker just color that just so you can see where you're actually removing the material so let's do that now Okay, I'm in for a closer look at what we're doing here. So like I said, I just marked this with permanent marker. Actually, I just marked it with permanent marker this time. The red one is permanent. The black one is actually a whiteboard marker and that's about as much use as a waterproof tea bag in this situation. So there we go. So we've marked it all the way across now. Let's address this lever cap. So like I said, I have a 400 grit diamond plate and this is just a cheap one, but it's good and flat and it's good for doing this job. And we've just marked the edge with red marker to see how much material we're actually removing. So I'm just gonna sit this down, make sure it's sitting nice and flat. I'm gonna keep even pressure across the front of it. It. this needs to be angled slightly down it's just how the lever cap uh, contacts the chip breaker and we'll just work that back and forward just like that now this shouldn't take a whole lot depending on again how well this was machined so if we just take a look now there you go i'm already edge to edge just about um there so that's just a couple of strokes and once this is done it's done for life you don't ever have to do this again it's just a nice little thing just to add a couple of percent to the actual plane to make it perform that little bit better so a few more strokes and there you go okay now i know that's flat edge to edge and uh, we have a good face that will sit on top of our chip breaker, chip breaker and it will keep even pressure all the way across that chip breaker so happy days leave a cap sorted we don't do anything more with that Okay, so that's the lever cap done, and like I said, it's done for life, so that's it, we're finished with it, don't do any more with that. Now let's address the chip breaker, and it's the same principle, I want to make sure that this is perfectly flat all the way across the blade and making contact the whole way across that blade. So you can actually just put it up there, you can hold it up to the light, and uh, just see if you can see any little gaps coming through there, and I can see a slight gap on this side. So, we're going to address that now, so again we can use the uh, permanent marker. Now you don't have to use permanent marker, but just to illustrate for you guys, I'm just gonna put a red line all the way across that edge. Now, the particular chip breaker on these Quang Sheng planes have a flat part here, and that's kind of angled down um, away from the chip breaker. So it's off at an angle here. So we wanna kind of replicate that angle. So if you leave the chip breaker, just sit down like that. I have the diamond plate now on a flat board because there's ridges in my worktop. And this is how I like to do it. So I like to just match that angle and we can use the screw in the back of the chip breaker to either raise or lower the chip breaker so we can match that angle. 
and that actually looks pretty good there. So I'm going to run with that. So same as before, we want to get a little bit of honing fluid. If I can find it, there we go. And uh, we just want to work this down until it's nice and flat. And once this is done, it's also done for life. So same again, once my angle is correct and I'm happy that I'm running exactly where I need to be running, it's even pressure across the front and it's just a case of up and down. And we'll see how much material we need to remove off this. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm almost edge to edge on this. So I'll do a small bit more work and then we're just about done. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm edge to edge. I have a nice flat face there, but I've also just created a bar here now. So I'm just gonna just address that. Just give it a slight rub off. Again, I don't wanna turn this into a blade. So just address that bar. I'll give you a close up of the back of the chip breaker now and you can see exactly what I've done. Okay, so there is my chip breaker. So you can see that's the part here that makes contact with the blade right at the tip here. It's angled down and uh, you can see what we've done there. So we've just flattened it from this edge to this edge. So I now know that I'm making perfect contact with my blade the entire way across my chip breaker and those two surfaces are mating perfectly now, which will help reduce chatter and hold that blade in place. So there you go, that's all we have to do. And that's the chip breaker done. Like I said, once that's done, that's also done for life. So no more, let's address the blade. Okay, so on to the blade now. The brand new blade that comes in your plane is not prepared. It is ground, it is sharp, but it's not sharp enough to woodwork with. And we have to put a nice sharpened bevel on this. And we also need to make sure that we're perfectly flat, edge to edge behind the blade. Now I have a full video on this, how I do it, how I hand sharpen, what I'm using, the scary sharp sharpening system, the whole lot, I link that below. I'm not gonna do it in this video because I'll just be repeating myself. So if you guys wanna see exactly how I prepare a plane blade, there's a full video on it. So I'm just gonna explain what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get on and do it and I'm gonna show you the results. So first job I need to do is flatten the back of this blade. So I wanna make sure, like I said, edge to edge behind my cutting surface is perfectly flat. Once I have that done, I'm gonna establish a secondary bevel. I'm gonna hand sharpen and get this razor sharp. So I'm gonna get on and do that. And like I said, I'll show you the results and then we'll address the rest of the plane. Okay guys, so the blade is all sorted now. So you can see just behind my cutting surface from edge to edge, I'm polished there. So you can see it's removing more material here and less material here. So the back of the blade is never perfectly flat, but you want to be perfectly flat behind your cutting edge. And all you want to do is get a nice polished surface from this edge all the way over to this edge. And once that's done, you don't have to do anything else for a while until your blade starts to move down past where you have it polished. Then you'll have to redo the back of the blade. But for that'll be a while to come. And uh, here is the blade itself. So you can see I've just put a polished secondary bevel on that right there. Hopefully that's coming out on camera and I've just rolled the corners ever so slightly. So there's a little bit more material taken on each corner just to roll off those corners to prevent track marks. And again, that's all done by hand. I have a full video on exactly how to do this. Uh, I'll leave that linked below. Okay, so now that we have the lever cap, chip breaker and blade all sorted and ready to go, let's get this reassembled. Now, when you're putting your chip breaker back on, never drag it over your blade and risk uh, undoing all that lovely hard work that you've just put into getting that thing extra sharp. So pull it back, turn it around and then slide it up to the blade. I only want to be just barely a little over a millimeter back from my blade and we'll cinch that down. Just like that. And now that chip breaker is married to that blade all the way across the back and there's no light getting in there whatsoever, which is exactly what we want. Now, turn your blade so that your frog is perfectly parallel to your table. So it's essentially uh, nice and flat and then you can drop this guy in again. Just be careful not to uh, catch that nicely sharpened blade. And we'll get our lever cap back on. Just check to see how tight that is. Okay, I want to snug that down a small bit. We don't want to make it too tight that it's too hard to adjust, but we don't want it too loose either that we end up getting chatter. So let's get that. That's a little bit too tight. Back it off a touch. That's pretty good. And here's the adjustment. A little stiff, so we'll back it off some more. Again, loosen it up. For a quarter of a turn. Okay, that's just about perfect. So that's good and tight and it's 
relatively easy to adjust. Now, we're almost home, hopefully. This is where it could go catastrophically wrong for us. So we need to check if our plane sole is flat and our sides are square, and hopefully they are, otherwise we have a whole pile of work to do. So let's do that. Okay, so now let's check the sole of the plane. So I'm just gonna drop it into my voice here. Now I'm not gonna squeeze it in the voice, I'm just placing it in so it's just barely held. Do not put pressure on the side of your plane. Uh, you could risk bowing in the sides and knocking them off square, and that's a disaster to try and put right. You don't want to do that, so be careful. Now, these are, like I said, Quang Sheng. This is from Workshop Heaven, and they have them made to British standard, which is better than 1.5 tail. So I have a 0.04 millimeter feeler gauge here, which is about 1.4 tail. So if this can't slip under anywhere, I know it's better than British standard, and that is more than good enough for me. So I'm just gonna check along with a known straight edge to see if this will slip under anywhere. And uh, yeah, that's pretty flat all the way along. Let me just check out to the edge. That's pretty good. These are very well machined, so we have, by the looks of it, not much work to do here. So depending on the plane that you get, whether it's a really cheap one or a good one, you'll either have no work or a load of work to do here. And it's a lot of elbow grease, believe me. I've flattened about 20 soles on different planes and it's a nightmare. Now, the most important area for me is the right leading edge of the mouth here. Uh, when the plane blade digs underneath the fibers, it lifts them up. So you want that mount sitting on top of those fibers so that you can slice through them cleanly and you don't get tear out. Uh, so this needs to be pressing down on the timber all the way across in front of the blade. And uh, so that's a, a particular area to pay attention to. And I can see that's not even beginning to slip under there. So that's good. So I'm good and flat all the way across, which is happy days. Now, I know that sole is good. If the sole wasn't good, what I would then do is take a pencil, scribe it across it like this. I would get a good flat surface. I have a piece of um, flattened granite that I do this on. You attach some 120 grit sandpaper and you work the plane back and forth on the sandpaper and you can see where you remove the pencil marks so you can see your high and low spots. Luckily enough, we don't have to do that here because it can be a lot of work and believe me, I've done it so many times and it takes hours. So that's happy day. Now we just need to check if the plane sides are good and square and if they are, then we're ready to use this plane. Okay, so we are almost there and ready to use our plane that we've just taken out of our box. Now I just wanna check the sides all the way down and just make sure that these are good and square and they seem to be. Again, this can be a nightmare to put right and if it's too out of square, I'd say don't even bother. Just use the sole, the flat part of the sole and don't use it with your shooting board. Um, you just want really square sides if you're gonna be using your plane with a shooting board and I intend on using this five and a half with a shooting board. Now you can just hold on the square on the side and try and slip under your feeder gauge right at the edge and then right in the middle. And I can see that's not even getting under anywhere across there. So we can check the other side. And if it's square according to this engineer square, then that's square enough for me. Now I should just point out as well, when you're doing this, make sure that you have the blade and the chip breaker and the lever cap in, because once you lock that down, then you're putting some tension into the sole. You're gonna deform it ever so slightly. And it's when it's like that, that you wanna make sure that it's flat. Not flat when everything is out, but flat when everything is in, because that's when you're using it. So make sure that's all in and locked down and that you have tension in that so that you can then check for how flat it is. And whenever you're checking, if your blade is protruding, always rub from back to front, never front to back, because, well, you can see what can happen there. You will, uh, yeah, slice your fingers to pieces. So always rub this way and you won't have an issue. So we are pretty much good to go now. Now it's the proof is in the pudding as they say. Let's put this to the test. All right, let's test out our newly fettled plane. And this is the most fun part. So let's get on with it. Now, I'm gonna bring our blade out. I'm just gonna use a white piece of paper. It's just nice contrast between that and the blade. The blade looks like a nice black line. Like I said, contrast it against that white background, especially if your eyes aren't too good. This will really help you out. So just advance that blade, just so I see it protruding, protruding through. And if it's favoring one side over the other, so if it's sticking out more to the right or more to the left, move the adjustment lever towards the side that it's sticking out and that'll bring it back nice and square. So there we go, that's nice and square. So I'm just gonna retract that blade back in, just make sure it's gone out of the way. Again, run, rubbing your hand from back to front, never down this way. So we have a nice piece of maple uh, on the bench here. Let's test out this. So let's give it a quick run, advance that blade slightly and see. Okay, there's a way for tin shaving. 
And you can hear there's no chatter, there's no vibration. It's just nice and smooth. So let's see if I can pull this up because it's extremely thin. There you go. It is wispy thin. There we go, there's a nicer one. We're getting flatter now. So here we go. That's cutting through that maple like butter, which is exactly what we want. And again, if we're taking off more material on one side than the other, again, just adjust that lever so that you're bringing everything nice and to the center. You can see, whoop, they are wispy thin shavings. So I'll get you in for a quick close up and then we'll bring this video to a conclusion. Okay, have you in a little bit closer there. Now one thing you can do is just take a little bit of a candle and just rub that on the sole. That will help everything glide that much better. Take a couple of more shavings on this piece of maple. It's beginning to flatten out there now. So you can see just how wispy thin those shavings are, which is great. Now, more important than the shavings is the surface that you're leaving behind, and that is like glass now. You would never even get close to that with sandpaper, that kind of finish. It is absolutely fantastic. So you can see, just with a little bit of work, you can take your plane from the box to taking absolutely beautiful shavings. Let's see if we can get a nice full length shave in here. Here we go. So it doesn't get much better than that in Howard Maple. Happy days. Okay guys, so there we go. That is one brand new hand plane taken from the box all the way to silky smooth shavings and absolutely beautiful surface left on our material, which is exactly what we want. So that's how I do it. That's what I do every time I get a new hand plane, go through all those checks, perform all those little uh, tune-ups just to add to the functionality of the plane and every little bit helps and really turns that plane into a fantastic plane. Now, like I said, it depends on which brand you go with, how cheap the plane is, how much work you're gonna to have to do. But if you go through all those processes and check everything that I've checked, you might have to put in a lot more elbow grease, maybe to get the side square or to get the sole flat. And believe me, I have been there, but uh, these ones are pretty good out of the box. And a little bit of work to put them right where they need to be and they are absolutely fantastic planes. So hopefully you've enjoyed that one guys. Hopefully you've got some good information out of it. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Any comments, any questions, anything you would do differently, just get in the conversation and in the comment section below, I try to get it back to everybody if I can. Thanks as always to everybody over on Patreon who continue to support the channel. It is very much appreciated guys. And as always, links to everything will be below. And any questions, like I said, just leave them in the comment section. So that's it guys, I'm gonna get out of here now. That is my new uh, Quangsheng 5.5 uh, plane all tuned up, ready to go for the next project. I'll see you in the next one guys, take it easy.